Hello, everyone. So welcome uh, to this uh, new session of, uh, of uh, the AVI Conversations uh, 2020. Is, uh, I'm Paolo Celotta, and, uh, and uh, from AVI, our guest uh, uh, today is uh, Elizabeth Hope. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. <laughs> Good so Elizabeth is uh, is uh, one of the we have known each other for uh, for some time is one of the authorities of of media literacy in in the Netherlands aren't you is uh, she she has done a lot uh, really on uh, for for parents uh, children uh, teachers uh, and uh, you found uh, a, a media rackers i think rackers uh, means a naughty boy or something similar yes that is how uh, how i got started yeah okay yeah. and uh, the the and uh, you also founded the dutch academy for media and society is uh, uh, one of your main activities to provide uh, uh, training and workshops on uh, media literacy related uh, uh, subject you have done uh, since long time uh, is uh, this uh, uh, media coach uh, trainings too is uh, a, a, which uh, which uh, which is uh, one of the reason why we we got uh, in touch. We have written uh, uh, many books. Also, is uh, not all on on media literacy. We we come to that uh, in uh, in a second. We uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, uh, an audience from uh, from uh, many different. Uh, countries uh, is about on Facebook uh, live uh, and on zoom uh, and uh, we will uh, offer also these uh, uh, videos together with the subtitle is uh, many of our uh, participants are not uh, uh, native English speakers but with YouTube uh, the, the video that uh, will be available there uh, will have uh, the, the subtitles so, so certain things uh, will be will be easier uh, to 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 follow the uh, uh, participants can ask uh, uh, can ask questions uh, is uh, Laura that is uh, on the other side of the screen uh, for Avi is everybody's on the other side of the screen these days <laughs> but this, <laughs> Laura is uh, facilitating uh, this uh, this uh, the, the, this process uh, and uh, she will uh, also help in monitoring uh, the questions that uh, we we can go through a bit later on in uh, in the interview. I mentioned quickly, and then uh, and then uh, we we start uh, with our uh, conversation uh, that the 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 idea of the AVI conversations uh, is to offer a space uh, is uh, where uh, we can uh, uh, gather together and uh, uh, with international experts. Uh, very well known uh, because uh, you have been, uh, we have been active uh, in these uh, domains in research, uh, education, uh, policy, lobbying, uh, uh, projects, initiatives uh, for, uh, for many years. Uh, and I hope that this uh, reflection will uh, help us in uh, feeding uh, the, the, the debate further and uh, the different activities uh, that, uh, that we will do. So I, I hope that uh, the the participant will will value this uh, this uh, uh, service. Uh, is uh, this a brief introduction also maybe a serve for people to settle down? Uh, some of you are already very comfortable. Uh, others uh, a little bit less. Uh, we are all on a sofa and desk and things. Uh, is uh, very few people are in the offices uh, uh, these days. Uh, is uh, I am uh, by the way, but uh, but uh, uh, essentially on my own. Uh, so I'm not uh, cont uh, contagious, uh, con contagious uh, or uh, anyone. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, the the <laughs> the message. Is uh, uh, so, uh, Elizabeth. I would uh, I would suggest that we start with uh, with. Uh, um, are you comfortable with having uh, this uh, conversation? Are you looking yeah. forward? Yes, very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm waiting for the first question. <laughs> I'm asking because is, I know that you have done uh, very different things in your life. Uh, and uh, and the one of that is boxing, is it? 
Yes, boxing is still a, a, a hobby of mine. Eh? Yeah. I know that uh, you, you maybe you have to prepare before the no, is it the, the match? Is <laughs> that? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't consider this to be a match. No, because I know you too long already. No, a, and I, I think the the, the topic uh, that we have today is a, a very interesting one and a very important one. And um, I'm very lucky that uh, that we are both part of this uh, European Media Coach project, where we are allowed to. Uh, set up media coach trainings in five other countries in Europe. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, wonderful to be able to share our experiences uh, about uh, these trainings and about why it is so important to educate teachers, especially teachers, as media coaches. Huh? Yeah. And and uh, we we will uh, we will want to know more about it uh, in a moment because you have done it uh, not uh, since six months uh, but uh, more than ten years uh, and successfully. So is uh, we really would like to to get uh, your uh, recipe for success. Uh. Okay. is uh, uh but uh, yeah I'm, I'm really curious i was joking a bit uh, about the boxing i mean joking i know that is uh, that is true is uh, can, can you is uh, uh now your passion is uh, is media literacy but it wasn't uh, uh a, a while ago no is uh, how did you get here yeah i i had a very um yeah in some people's eyes a very weird career because I started off as a tennis teacher. <laughs> so that, I was. That's uh, a, more, a, a, a better metaphor than uh, we can uh, in the conversation. Yeah, we can that, that, the ball yeah. from uh, the different <laughs> exactly. side of the. Eh? Exactly. That's a good idea. But no, I started off as a tennis teacher because sport was very important in my life. Um, but after a couple of years uh, of, of doing that, I. Uh, uh, got more interested in doing other things as well, and I started to uh, I started a career in the hotel industry in hospitality, uh, which I still very much like uh, to do as well. Uh, so that is something that uh, uh, was very nice. I used to work for large hotel chains like Hilton, uh, for example, Hilton International. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, almost by accident, uh, somebody um, spoke to me about a job that was available in a media production company. And there my addiction, my media addiction started, because when I started to work there, it was all about um, making presentations in PowerPoint for companies or um, uh, making CDI discs can you remember what that that, that was uh, cd interactive it was an invention by philips and it I, was, I never uh, heard of it i mean is uh, the I, I know about uh, this uh, the the dvd that you could record on it uh, no and that this uh, was no what, yeah. what was a cdi the, the cdi was a a kind of interactive uh, uh, cd where you could develop training programs for example so if somebody would give the wrong answer it would go and uh, that person would go another way than the person who gave uh, the good answer so but it was not online eh? it was a cd a cd so you have to put it in a cd player and then you could play with this program that and then now and then I I um, uh, I also experienced the movement to CD-ROM, so everything went on the computer because CD Interactive was played on a CD player on your television. So then it became CD-ROM and it went to the computer. And when I worked for that first company, so we made beautiful CD-ROM programs, training programs, education that was already in my interest. And then it became internet. And then the internet connections came and the uh, they had the www the the the, the uh, world uh, was uh, introduced and then i really became addicted because that was the first moment that it was possible to communicate two ways without a delay and for me that was there were so many new possibilities opening up for communication, for education, for entertainment. I immediately um, saw the, the, the huge possibilities of that new medium eh, or that new 
uh, way of, of, of communicating with people. So I, I really got addicted. But to be honest, I saw this, this uh, development of the internet and it became bigger and became bigger. And it's, it's like traffic. And the traffic became also um, busier and busier. And at a certain moment, we thought that it was necessary to teach children about traffic, to give traffic lessons to children. And after a few years, I, I also started to realize that new developments always come with big advantages and big chances and possibilities, but also with big disadvantages and risks. Uh, especially for the, the more vulnerable people that also came online. Huh? So the children was a, 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 a very big uh, um, uh, concern of mine. And, and also because I have a son and my son Nick was only nine years old when I started my first uh, internet company. And uh, I started that because um, Nick uh, uh, said to me in a shop, we were shopping for bread. So we were, we were in a bakery and he was looking through the glass and he said, Mama, why do all the prices end at 99 cents? So I started to realize, yeah, I started to realize, well, hey, maybe children don't understand the, the commercial world that we all created for them around them. And maybe they don't understand advertising. Maybe they don't understand what a company uh, does. And um, that is how I got started with media literacy. Because then I started to talk to the school uh, of Nick. Is uh, uh, is uh, the, the, the a, a couple of points uh, that uh, that uh, you have mentioned uh, is I think uh, the the metaphor of using traffic uh, is uh, is a very good one uh, for media literacy. Is uh, and uh, within this traffic, uh, we should learn uh, to, to drive the car, no? Is, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it, it exactly. should be obvious. Uh, is, yeah. uh, that, uh, and then you have to know when uh, that you shouldn't pass when the traffic light is red, uh, or to go slow, or to, 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 to accelerate. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you want to use a car, right, you have to learn how to, to, to drive it, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. And it was, uh, first of all, I think that that media, uh, the, the two way media, the Internet media um, first started off as being a tool that you would go to. Huh? So you would go to your computer to sit down and then you would hear this terrible noise of the Internet line through the telephone line. Can you remember? Yeah. So um, that was the way you got online. You got to this world. And, and it, but nowadays the internet is, is part of your life. It is almost part of your body. The, the, the media came closer and closer. I mean, if you look at the television, it was three meters away and we would share it with more people. Then the computer, it, it became already closer. Huh? It was, uh, let's say a meter, huh? if you have long arms, <laughs> less than a meter. But then you have the laptop, it's already on your lap. You have the palm top, it's in your palm of your hand. And nowadays uh, the internet is already in your ears because all these young people, they wear the... And the, apparently the, I've, I've read that uh, is uh, no, it's a Google launch uh, these uh, Google Eye uh, glasses a while ago, but uh, they didn't work. Yeah, but didn't uh, there work. are other companies now that are working on that. Uh, and it seems that it's going to be the next screen uh, is uh, in uh, in uh, uh, to 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 appear. Yeah, the, so I, um, think I think that the the, the 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 online media or the the uh, is almost an extension of our body and mind. So it is um, it is so crucial in our lives that much more than it was than it was before. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh... And, and uh, I, I really appreciate uh, that uh, these uh, comments uh, that come uh, from, uh, from uh, no, is, uh, is such a free spirit uh, as you are, uh, no, is, uh, having gone uh, through the, 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 the experiences uh, that, uh, that you mentioned, uh, is uh, show that uh, 
in, you, know, you have been able to move beyond the, the rigid structure or the conformist is a path that our society is a bit pushing on and rather than aligning is media literacy for you, you know, is, a, is, is an interest that, that you have, uh, that you have yeah. followed. So you didn't align with the... The, what everybody is doing uh, somehow, no, is uh, passing uh, from uh, from uh, yeah, uh, sport to art uh, to to training, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So is uh, is uh, indeed uh, uh, an approach that I I I notice uh, is uh, the um, th that is different because uh, than than what we usually get from academician, for instance. Uh, you have been able to translate uh, this. Uh, knowledge uh, into something uh, uh, concrete with uh, you mentioned the word impact uh, that uh, I think is uh, is something uh, very important to, to to keep in mind I am always uh, 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 reflecting about uh, there are these uh, wonderful uh, scientific paper uh, that uh, uh, I read every now and then and they come across uh, but no one is reading them they they are published just for the sake of uh, the CV of the researcher is such a pity because there is a lot of knowledge in there and uh, I mean they have been written regardless of the audience uh, of the of the reader and instead uh, your uh, pragmatic approach say is or a marketing one uh, because mm -hmm. you, you you mentioned that you did that too as uh, the, 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 the the people uh, no, is at, at the at the center uh, is uh, the fact that uh, uh, it, it was also a, one of the, 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 the pillar of, uh, of uh, that uh, documented the declaration of Grundwald uh, in uh, 50 years ago of media literacy that was saying, uh, yeah, we can, we have to accept the role that the media are playing in our societies. Once you accept it, then uh, you can try to improve uh, what is improvable. Is uh, me? I am uh, maybe a bit too idealistic or or uh, utopian, uh, and uh, it's good to have those conversations. But as well as those, uh, we have to be practical. And uh, is uh, you know, for instance, uh, as you mentioned before, informing uh, is uh, the, the consumers. We are in a, in a no. Your boy is uh, discover it. Uh, we are in a commercial society or media society for other aspects. Uh, so what can we do? Which skills should we, should we uh, gain to be better consumers? Yeah, and I think also, <clears throat> um, if I wouldn't have been practical, I mean, the media world, and, and from that first moment on when I got to know the internet, the two-way communication possibilities, um, if I wouldn't have been practical, then I wouldn't have you know, uh, reached what I reached now, I wouldn't have had the possibility to start a media coach training program. Um, because the media um, were uh, very, very fast moving, fast developing. Eh? Uh, so we had the internet, then the mobile internet came, we always talk about three or four media uh, revolutions. I mean, the internet was a revolution a big one because the world really has changed since the introduction of the internet. But then the second revolution in my eyes uh, is the fact that the internet became mobile so that the children would you know, have the internet with them and they walk out of the room and we have no idea what they are doing. So that was revolution number two. And then to my opinion, social media platforms, so the facilitating companies, uh, they don't provide us with content. No, they provide us with a service where we share the content together. So we are the ones um, making this, this online virtual world together. And these companies, they only facilitate us in doing that. That is revolution number three. Because this also means that we all became journalists, that we all became experts, that we all became... And it also means that we are now uh, suffering from this tunnel vision, uh, 
problem that we have uh, in social media, the fake news that we have in the, in the social media, and um, also with the polarization, uh, the tunnel vision also uh, causes uh, polarization. Uh, but but to, go, to go back, I beg your pardon, but to go back to this pragmatical thinking, uh, when I see something that society needs, I immediately start to act. And I think that, uh, that, that that has been very important in my life, that I don't talk too long or I don't, uh, I, I don't like meetings that are too long. I like to do and, and also learn by doing. That is uh, something that, uh, um, that Bumber and I, my partner and I, uh, we, we strongly believe in. And another thing we strongly believe in is that growth shouldn't be a purpose on itself. So uh, when you start an initiative and it is going well, um, then Bummer and I, we would choose, we will choose for um, improving the quality and not improving the quantity. So we strongly believe in uh, also this virus thinking. So if we provide education to teachers, the teachers will provide education to children. We don't have to do that or, and it is much better not to do that yourself, but to share your knowledge with people that can share knowledge with others, that can share knowledge with others, that can share knowledge with others. Because then uh, in the end you reach uh, many more people, children, parents, colleagues, than if you would do it by yourself. So it's it's also that's also part of pragmatic thinking, I think. It is. Uh, <clears throat> it is indeed that it is not sufficient to sit on the top of a, of a mine mountain. No, is uh, even if you are the wisest man in the world, uh, you you have uh, you have to act. Uh, no, is uh, to do your yeah. your bit uh, to improve things uh, that yeah. uh, that uh, that can be can be improved. I was reading. Uh, a, a, an article about uh, the different approaches uh, that uh, people have uh, in uh, in uh, philosophy, for instance, and the uh, northern mm -hmm. countries have, uh, and I was uh, discussing this with uh, with my partner that is British, uh, and uh, the the article was arguing uh, that uh, is uh, for instance uh, British uh, are less capable of uh, abstracting. Uh, is uh, a, for instance uh, to say. On the and français or, or sidiche, they have to say you say, or uh, instead of say to say nobody, they have to refer it to the body. Nobody, somebody <laughs> is uh, so it has to be a, a very concrete uh, is principle. But yeah. other than that, I don't know whether this is the case or not. Uh, generally speaking, is is a uh, is a bit of banalization. But uh, but yeah, is uh, I I we have. To, to do something. Uh, we Here we are good starters. Uh, I, I also appreciate the fact that you improve uh, the quality and the tuning of what you are doing uh, because it's a skill that uh, I, we, I should learn for sure <laughs> is, uh, is uh, or, or to have uh, a, a team that is able to do no, the different uh, phases of the process. How many how many uh, media coach have, have you trained? Uh, is, uh, in, in, in these years. Yeah, in the, in the Netherlands, we started with the first training in 2007. Um, and I, I remember that we, that we said to each other, if we have 10 people interested, we will do the first training. But then we already, for the first training, we had a waiting list of 85 people. So it was an, how do you say that? It was something that was so crucial for society um, and not only because people, uh, teachers wanted to teach it to children, but also for, they wanted to be updated for themselves. They really wanted to know what was going on in the media, uh, what the trends were, how they could communicate this to children and, and what, what the, the risks were in, in this media life, because we, were, we are now media citizens, all, all of us. We, media is in our lives, we cannot do without. Um, so it is a crucial part uh, uh, in our lives. That also means that media coaches are also crucial in our in our lives, especially in schools. So for, for me, it became a vital profession, a media coach, because uh, 
Um, so again, how, ma how many uh, people oh, have, uh, have yeah, come across? More than, more than 4,000 people already were trained in the Netherlands. 4,000? That's more amazing. More than 4,000 people. Wow. And um, in, in 2008, we, has, we, we, we already got the, the help of the European Commission to also uh, develop trainings in Belgium, Germany and Sweden. So that was the first round. And now, of course, we are together with you in this European Media Coach project where we now help countries like Portugal, Cyprus, Greece, um, Romania and Bulgaria to also uh, put together a media coach training so that they can um, improve media literacy levels uh, of children and parents in their countries as well. I think it is it's a crucial well. way to do so because otherwise uh, you have children that will profit from media and you will have children that suffer from media. So to, my, to me, it is really important. I want children to be free to choose, to be free to be themselves. And that is why we have to empower them uh, in their usage of the media. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, I mean, uh, to, to, to be free to be yourself uh, is, uh, is a concept yeah. that is, uh, a, is an advice for life and uh, not just media literacy obviously or uh, for uh, for uh, as the role of parents or, or friends or teachers as you mentioned obviously or uh, stakeholders and governments uh, but it should be you know is uh, it should be the main thing we should want uh, to have happy citizens happy people uh, rather than uh, G yes. the GPD and uh, showing how much money we are earning as a country, because it's, uh, then there are also this uh, gap of uh, super, super rich people uh, and, uh, and a great uh, majority that does not, uh, I mean, is, uh, that is just on average and uh, there is a part that is absolutely uh, poor. Uh, is, uh, to, to reflect about the, these uh, socio-economic uh, situations, so we also notice uh, when we are doing these projects together, because it's uh, the culture is and the economic uh, situation of the different countries, uh, where there is, uh, is, uh, no, is uh, as you mentioned, uh, Cyprus, uh, Greece, or uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Portugal, or, uh, or in uh, uh, Germany, is, is very different, isn't it? And so we you have been able to advise us also on how to, to adapt it uh, to the different realities. Yes, and uh, yeah, but, but it, it is very, it's up to the experts in these countries themselves uh, to take our knowledge and our experiences that we have in the Netherlands and to adapt that to their local uh, situation. But I think this, uh, coming back to this, um, uh, being free to be yourself. I think in my life, um, it has always been important for me uh, to live according to my authenticity, to be really myself. And um, this media, uh, they, they, they are a great tool for me, but also for other people to kind of uh, be authentic and live your uh, life by your talents, by uh, by who you want to be. And it could be in different ways. So I have uh, the, the sport, I have my art, and I have this media. Uh, and for other people, there can be very, very different things. And I think that... Uh, um, I was noticing behind you the, the, the picture that you have just drawn you. That's a nice one. <laughs> I didn't do this one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think that the media um, uh, are a great tool uh, to live your life to the fullest. Uh, if you know the risks, if you are aware of the risks and uh, but it doesn't you doesn't you do you don't have to be afraid for the media. I mean, you can really profit from it. And um, we, we kind of uh, think that uh, uh, this media uh, well-being is, is an important thing to talk about because nowadays with the coronavirus, we are online much more even 
than before and we were all online already a lot but now it is getting more and more we are meeting each other through the um, media we are dating each other through the media we are i mean so it is really important to look at our health and to leak to to stay uh, alert on our freedom to choose freedom to uh, see what is uh, right what is uh, correct what is not correct and uh, we, we, uh, I, I, it's a good opportunity to mention that uh, tomorrow's guest uh, of, of the AVI conversation is uh, Christopher Burra, that is a researcher yes. specialized uh, on uh, technologies and well-being. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we look at, for example, we look, uh, we, we would like to empower people to use the media to their, um, uh, to their advantage, for example, for their physical health eh? for example there are all kind of apps that you can use to improve your health for example but also there are a lot of apps that you can use to improve your self-sustainability yeah so you can um uh yeah all, all the uh, the dutch government has an has their own app uh so you can uh look at your tax information and you can deal with them online um but another thing is, is that also media can be used for participation in society. I mean, uh, if, if, you, if your parents are very old and they're in an old people's home and you cannot visit them right now because of COVID. I mean, there are so many ways of still communicating with them, still meeting them. Uh, so, so you can use media for this participation part as well. And then yes, I'm, I'm glad that, that you mentioned because it's, uh, we have the tendency to focus on, uh, on the risks of, of technology mm -hmm. and, uh, and the, indeed uh, is, uh, uh, as well as those uh, is, uh, no, is uh, the, the, no, the, to learn how to use the media well uh, is, uh, is a great advantage. The problem is uh, that uh, is, uh, uh, the, the usual ones uh, they, they, they benefit uh, from, uh, from the media that are already in a, in a privileged condition uh, somehow mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because of uh, their families and, and uh, class if you want uh, and uh, those that uh, instead uh, are uh, they, they don't have access to the technology for a financial reason or for whichever reason educational one as well uh, they will never get uh, there. And, uh, and uh, so th this is the role of, of the governments now to try to reduce this. Uh, this uh, Absolutely. This and it is not taken for granted that everybody has access. I mean, we are living in, in the Netherlands, which is a country that is connected uh, for almost 99.9%. But there are countries still around in Europe, even in the UK, for example, it is not taken for granted that everybody has access. So that should be the first concern of governments, is that you don't um, create an, a divide between people that are online and the people that are not online. That is the first thing. But um, as soon as people on, are online, you still, this education to children is really, really important because they are going to be uh, the media citizens uh, of the future um but also uh, old people uh, they they need help in using uh, the media because all the, the 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 banks are being closed the offices so they have to learn how to use um the the apps and and the programs of the bank banks online for example i have uh, uh, i have uh, yeah i mean it necessary it, it takes time uh, is uh, one of uh, of my kids that uh, um this uh, lesson online is that uh, they all uh, connect uh, is uh, uh, 20 kids or so waiting for the teacher and after 10 minutes uh, the teacher sent a message saying i'm sorry i cannot connect <laughs> oh, yeah yeah exactly exactly well for this uh, for these young people in the netherlands we created uh, um, an interesting uh, educational program for primary schools that is where we started and we call it the, the media passport, the national media passport. So we try to give children a passport after six years of school um, so that they are kind of, um, how do you say that? It's like a driver's license. It's almost like they, they, they know about privacy, they know about uh, digital bullying, they know about social media stress, they know about all these 
uh, less nice uh, uh, aspects of, of media usage uh, nowadays. Yeah. Is, uh, is, uh, let, let, let me say something that um, just crossed my mind about uh, this driving license. Uh, is uh, uh, one point a few years ago is uh, uh, um, uh, starting from some reflection that uh, Popper uh, is uh, he, he was making. Uh, we were saying uh, that uh, uh, politicians uh, too, in order to be is uh, uh, eligible somehow, is that uh, they have to learn a first or to show that, that they can run a country. Is uh, If you are a taxi driver, you have to get your license first. If you want to open a shop, uh, you have to get your license first. Yeah. We don't understand why if you run uh, a country, you don't have to show that you have the skills or the integrity to do that first. That's it, uh, would you be in favor of having a driving license for politicians too? For politicians, absolutely. <laughs> Especially you, you, will, you will do the test. <laughs> Especially in the US at the moment. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I think that um, uh, politicians should be very media literate people as well. But they are, eh? it's, uh, because it's uh, the, the noise, uh, the success, uh, they, they, they show that they know much better the media than the average of the population. If you think uh, about people like uh, Trump, uh, that was a TV presenter. Uh, that's why I'm training yeah. as president. Yeah, yeah. I want yeah. to become uh, the US president as well. And uh, the, <laughs> the, or, or Berlusconi or, or many, yeah. many powerful yeah. people have started from exactly. media. They have understood uh, how to, to use it for their benefit, obviously. And uh, yeah, and they, they, they conquer power through that. And they have the talent also, because I think we can learn, uh, we can teach people how to benefit from media through this well being, uh, this media well being um, model that we use. So we can try to teach people to benefit uh, from media uh, to the utmost, uh, but also according to their talents, because not, not everybody has this talent to use the media in the way that Trump does or Berlusconi. But what we could do, for example, and that's maybe a, a nice uh, uh, tip for uh, the participants right now also, is uh, if you want to you know, become more media literate also about uh, politics, for example, it is a good idea now, today, to look at this uh, US elections uh, that are going on. But look at different channels, look at CNN, look at Fox News, look, look as, at NBC News and see how they, um, how they um, communicate about these elections, what topics that uh, do they select, uh, what are the words that they are using for the, uh, for the candidates. Um, so it, it is very interesting to, uh, to do that right now, today. I mean, it is... Uh, yeah, a very exciting day uh, for media uh, literate people. <laughs> yeah, if if you sit back uh, and and uh, you you are an observer uh, is uh, and uh, you are not involved emotionally in it uh, is uh, you can learn a lot indeed uh, is uh, is uh, a way you know, in which uh, mm -hmm. media are used uh, is uh, is uh, the 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 for for uh, uh to serve uh, a, a specific interest in this case the one of the of the of the candidates uh, is uh, more and more is a uh, media we will talk about uh, this uh, uh, further on in the conversation about uh, the the role of uh, journalism uh, media and democracy mm -hmm. but uh, yeah or, or public or private uh, service uh, who should uh, no, is, uh, have uh, that role and uh, you mentioned about social media very big uh, debate yeah. the but certainly is uh, the, the the first thing uh, is uh, that we should be aware that this is the field uh, where is uh, that uh, the, that battle is fought yes and, uh, yeah and i think um, it, uh, this is also why media coaches are so crucial I, I I would like I, I would like to see one media coach in every school, at least one. Because that if if you want answer. to understand uh, if you want to understand politics nowadays, um, if you are not media literate enough to follow this, then you will be you you won't be free to be you. 
because you will be influenced you will be manipulated you will be uh, put uh, pushed in a direction that you that, and you even won't know it that is, is that, why media literacy is so so important yeah i think is a is a very strong uh, and powerful uh, uh, message no you you cannot you say you cannot be free if you if no. you are not media literate this no day. no no because you will be manipulated um by politicians but also by companies by brands by um i mean uh, by by other people by your own friends in social media uh, is uh, is uh, more powerful because uh, you said that from from your experience uh, is uh, having work uh, in in these fields and uh, for for many years uh, so obviously is uh, is an informed uh, opinion uh, so he has more more weight uh, somehow is uh, yeah it's obvious to to some but uh, to the great majority of people uh, it is not uh, in fact is uh, is uh, is very frustrating to see that in certain discussions uh, even uh, with high level politicians uh, this is not an issue but uh, yeah mm -hmm. as they say in english uh, they are not adults in the room uh, they really haven't understood uh, is uh, how media works some uh, they have as as we mentioned before the uh, one uh, one thing that I wanted to to touch upon uh, you uh, uh, is it, nice that uh, again you are very concrete with one of your uh, wishes uh, to have one media coach uh, in uh, did you in say per school or per classroom? No, in every school. In every and school. We also so. we also got a question from one of the participants right now, um, yeah. who is asking. Um, if the media coach is always a teacher or can it also be a person from outside of schools? Huh? That's a very good question. And um, I have to say that when we started off with this media coach training, um, we both uh, educated teachers as well as uh, librarians. These people working in a library um, uh, could also be a media coach. And nowadays we have a lot of people that are independent media coaches so they started off with a with their own practice and um, when schools for example or even local governments need a media coach to set up a certain project about media literacy uh, um, with parents or with grandparents even we had this media coach uh, organizing uh, a wee party uh, with grandparents and grandchildren, for example, was very, very nice and very successful. Then uh, th these people can uh, can look for an independent media coach to do a project. So yes, there are also people outside of schools that became media coaches and they are independent entrepreneurs. So they started their own practice and they do uh, media literacy projects for different schools, to, different governments, yeah. I remember to, to attend one of your congress uh, last year where you had the 300 uh, media coaches is uh, gathering together in yeah. this uh, very beautiful theater in uh, and uh, also the, the I really appreciate the kind of show that you have been able to put together that was uh, related uh, to uh, to media uh, to media literacy but in an entertaining way again uh, you have to grab the attention of the audience uh, otherwise uh, exactly. is uh, is a waste of uh, of uh, of time no if people don't get it uh, you haven't said it yeah yeah the okay. um elizabeth can i ask you in fact that uh, the uh, there will be uh, many things uh, that i would like to go through uh, with you but uh, is uh, one is uh, um because is uh, again is a kind of interest that uh, that we have in common uh, you know that uh, yeah, has developed this uh, vision of media literacy the art of living with the media that uh, uh encompass uh, indeed uh, some of uh, of the skills uh, that you have uh, mentioned no emotions intuition uh, is uh, not just rational uh, is uh, a, a, yes. uh, logic Holistic things and uh, you also follow a, a, a model similar to that don't you yes that is the holistic approach of media literacy because if you are only um um uh, 
giving knowledge uh, on media and then you expect children to use this knowledge in the moment that they are using the media that is not working because um, children know know how the media work when you give a lesson like that but they won't practice it at the moment when they are in the media huh? um, so what we noticed is that you also have to um, think about the the emotions that media cause um, so media always per definition um, touch your emotions um, if you watch a television program if you uh, look at facebook if you are talking to somebody on the phone there's always emotion involved always so you have to in a media literacy lesson you also have to touch the emotion of children for example, if you have a, a lesson about online privacy, what you can do is ask the children to uh, unlock their mobile phone and to ask them to give it to their neighbor. And then you ask their neighbor to look into their emails, to look into their, and then you also say that they can say stop when they don't want uh, the other person to look any further. And this is, uh, how it works and they because... always, always say stop immediately yeah, imagine. they start screaming <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they have to give them the mobile phone to their neighbor they already start screaming <laughs> so you have but, but this is how you make children feel why it is important to be media literate only telling them that it is important is not enough you have to make them feel that it is important because then you touch their in, intrinsic motivation, their internal motivation, and then they can start thinking of their personal strategy to do to to do it uh, in in a in a different way the next time. Huh? So this is um, what we call media empowerment. We don't call this media literacy anymore, but this is media empowerment. So it is, it's it is a, and they, they will never they will never forget as a, such a lesson no? and uh, exactly they, they exactly. become I imagine them yeah. coming back home and uh, showing to the, their parents and saying oh well is uh, yeah. is uh, whether or not you call it privacy or or, uh, or yeah, it could know, be another anything you can... it doesn't really matter no is uh, you have learned uh, yeah they, you can you can also push. show them pictures for example of um not so decent people not such decent people in the classroom and ask them what if this picture would have been you how would you feel what do you think that other people think of you when you put a picture up like this and uh, but as soon as you touch the heart or you touch the emotion then the lesson will be so so much more effective than um then if you don't do that we we got that... another question of the, the 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 same person that uh with covid media coaches are no longer accepted in schools true and sometimes schools are even closed down how do you organize yourself um uh, personally in this new situation now what we do at the moment we have this refresher program for our media coaches in the netherlands uh, and our training program, everything is now online. So we also use Zoom like we do now, Paolo. Um, so we use Zoom for everything. And also um, our media coaches use different programs, to be honest, to teach to their children and media coaches will do the same thing. So they will be online teaching um, but you can give children wonderful assignments if you are online with them. Um, so you, 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 you put them uh, or you, you give them an assignment to look something up um, and they can present it in the group. So I think that we all have to uh, learn how to use these online tools to our advantage this is also there's no alternative isn't it uh, is uh, the the that's uh, that's uh, the only uh, the only sorry I'm, I'm trying to reach because it's uh, we are online but uh, while you were reading your questions i have a messages on whatsapp that refer to our conversation and uh, yeah i also have to get a bit uh, more use and skill in using this mm -hmm. uh, 
this uh, 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 this comment, but I'm also reminded that we should close uh, uh, soon. Is uh, I I think this is something uh, that uh, that we have. Uh, yeah, you have advised us, and uh, for instance, in those countries that we were mentioning before, is uh, indeed that uh, we are doing uh, those uh, those uh, trainings yeah. online, and that is. Uh, COVID think, uh, if uh, nothing else, uh, is, uh, seems to, to that uh, will last uh, for a little uh, while uh, longer. So indeed, uh, there is no alternative. Uh, Sometimes in life, uh, that's the best uh, scenario. So you go for it. Uh, you don't, uh, you stop analyzing uh, the situation uh, that is... Uh, and I don't uh, think it is for just a little while longer. I'm sorry. I think we isn't... will never go back to completely physical education. I don't believe that. I, I believe that we are now um, in, a, in, a, in a very, very uh, important uh, uh, time period. Um, we are now all getting used to being online, to work online, to educate online, to be educated online. We will never go back to how it was before. Um, so if, if yeah. Um, uh, is that uh, yeah, something? Uh, th this is going to stay. This is something that uh, it will will stay for. A, is, uh, a is, uh, do you think that is uh, it is also related to the last question that I ask you? Is uh, that is asked for Laurent? Uh, that is about uh, whether this will be sustainable in the in the longer uh, is a uh, term. Uh, so is uh, is going to last? It will be in hybrid uh, uh, system. Uh, will it be sustainable? Uh, I think. I think hybrid. I, I, we believe strongly in hybrid, but we already uh, chose to uh, th that we will never uh, have um, the media coach training program back to completely physical meetings. Mm -hmm. We will we will we won't do that. We will probably in in ten sessions uh, because the media coach training is uh, uh, constructed in ten sessions of three uh, hours. Uh, probably we will meet um, uh, three times in yeah. that. Uh... The, um, I answer myself to one of the questions that is asking for a resource or examples. And very soon we will publish what we call the prototype, that is a document that illustrates good and, and uh, 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 difficulties uh, that uh, and the methodology that uh, we have uh, uh, run into following your advice in the different countries uh, and we show is uh, is uh, what it work what it didn't and how we tackle uh, so that that could be useful for uh, for uh, other uh, other people that would like to do uh, a similar things in other countries uh, and yeah, uh, so, so there will be a lot of resources available we have another question asking somebody is asking if People um, are asking questions at the very end, uh, but we have to yeah. close in uh, in uh, in two minutes. Uh, okay, I will I will, I will answer this question uh, quickly. Um, this question is: Is there going to be a big divide between connected countries and not so connected countries in education? And yes, of course, there will be a, a bigger gap between those countries, and that is why. Um, we think that uh, media literacy is crucial in this time period that we live, all of us. Uh, but I also think that um, a group of media coaches trained in your country, uh, that could be the kind of, uh, how do you say that, the kind of starters of this, uh, this viral thing, uh, this media coaches. If you, if you train, let's say, 10 media coaches in a country, who will train other people to be a media coach who will be able to train it it's a kind of viral thinking and maybe i'm very idealistic in this but i strongly believe in this if we only have a couple of people interested in teaching media literacy to other people and to children um, then we get this fire burning and uh, and we need that because otherwise we get uh, not only the, the, the division between countries in education, but also in well-being, also in, um, in in richness and poorness. I mean, it is going it's to a, be... A it's a, it, it would be I, I, I think it's, uh, it's not idealistic. I think it's a good plan or a strategy. It's a win-win situation because it's also seemed to offer a good opportunity for a 
a career, say, somehow, is uh, it can only increase of, of importance. Uh, this has uh, increased uh, exponentially in the last uh, uh, 10 years. So it will continue like that. Uh, we live in, in this uh, media society. And, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, there's a uh, noise uh, to, to influence your peers or to be an agent or a multiplier uh, of, uh, of uh, also fulfill uh, somehow a, 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 a civic uh, role. Is, uh, I, let, me, let me thank you is, uh, 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 the, uh, before, uh, yeah, I, I think at the time I was, uh, was off, but uh, if you still hear me and uh, there, is, uh, there is a slide where you can find uh, information uh, for the participants about Elizabeth and, uh, and obviously uh, uh, Avi, if you want to get in touch, uh, I thank you very much, Elizabeth. It was uh, lovely to, to talk to you. Is uh, thank you also for the people that have attended, and uh, for the for the Avi people uh, that uh, really make uh, this uh, uh, happening, uh, which is uh, which is. Uh, uh, I mean, I couldn't do it on, on my own uh, for sure. They are really wonderful, uh, all of them. Uh, Gulz and Andrew is Laura is uh, Soti. We have Matis as well uh, today and Fabio. Is uh, uh, if you uh, wanted to send us uh, some feedback on how to improve uh, again, uh, uh, trying to be very uh, practical. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, please uh, uh, fill the form that is available for this purpose. Uh, uh, tomorrow we have uh, this session that I was mentioning with uh, uh, Christopher Burr and we will talk about technology and the well-being uh, and then the following day we'll have uh, Facebook itself. Uh, so thank you very much uh, is, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, I give you the floor uh, for uh, uh, just uh, a few seconds if you want to add something. I, I just uh, in the chat I, uh, I added my email address because we had some questions uh, uh, on Facebook as well for materials. We have free materials uh, that are available in English. There's, uh, please send me a mail at this email address in the chat um, and I will send it to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I hope that we will have uh, very soon the opportunity to continue this uh, conversation, but I'm sure that uh, it was a good, uh, a good uh, um, service for our uh, participants. I remind them that is, uh, there are multiple ways uh, to uh, to go again uh, through the, this uh, this video. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Paolo. It was really nice talking to you. <laughs>